You've seen their highs. You have seen their lows. Now see them for who they are as the front row seat brings you up close and personal with star athletes. On today's episode, Faris Ramli has been on fire for Haugang United with 17 goals this season. An important member of the Singapore national team, he was also recently crowned the 2019 AIA Player of the Year. I'm super excited to welcome AIA Player of the Year for 2019, Haugang United's Faris Ramli. And look, before the start of the event, we had a little chat. We talk about 2017 when you were nominated but had the disappointment of losing out. Were you expecting to win? To be honest, um, I have a mixed feeling of it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, like I said yesterday to you, you know, anything can happen. So I didn't expect to win, but uh, I'm just uh, honoured and glad that my individual uh, performances is being recognised by uh, everyone. So yeah, I'm happy for it. It was a grand event at the Orchard Hotel, the FAS night that was used to celebrate the pillars of Singapore football. Do you enjoy these events uh, away from the pitch and dressing up and coming on to uh, special events like that? Yeah, of course, I think everyone enjoyed it. Um, everyone had fun. Uh, you know, besides, like you said, in the pitch, you know, everyone got to know each other outside the pitch. And I think this is one of the uh, time where you know different clubs were. Put or put aside their differences and you know come together and you know we have a cheat a little chit chat and here and there and just having some talks here and there and about their backgrounds and all so I think it's a it's a good thing for football. It was good to see your teammates coming out in force as well. Clementio, the head coach, was coming down and everyone's very jovial. There seems to be a nice family spirit within the squad. Um, is that what you enjoy? Everyday training with each other is fun. Yeah, of course. Uh, every day seeing their faces, I feel like it's family, you know. Um, everywhere I go, is uh, whether it's a different team, uh, that year you need to be together, the bonding must be right uh, to play together. And, you know, we we like to achieve something, but like, like I spoke to you yesterday, I think we, are just, we fell short uh, into the title, so yeah. You have no more games. The, the season is over for Haugang United, not involved in the Singapore Cup. But there's one more game, actually, for you guys. You're playing against the Haugang Hools every year. <laughs> At the end of the season, the main SPL side will play against what I think you would say are the best fans in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, how much are you looking forward to that? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I appreciate uh, Haugang Hools. You know, even in 2017, I was in Home United. Uh, they are the fans, they are one of the fans that uh, really boot me one side uh, to you know distract my games and all so i feel like this year i'm on their side and they cheer me up whether we are losing uh, that motivates me and motivates the team to do well you know we come back quite a few games uh, because of them so i feel like uh, they deserve something and i think this is uh, a token of appreciation for them you know we we play against them i think they wanted to play against us also so it's just a, a family bonding i think uh, that haugang appreciates uh. so uh, i'm looking forward to it actually you've had a great year on and off the pitch i would say there was a big milestone recently for you off the pitch which was your son's first birthday uh. and there was a big celebration <laughs> Luf's first birthday how has fatherhood changed you mm, dramatically man uh, fatherhood it's it's not easy. Uh, I feel like uh, I thought it was easy at first, uh, looking at some parents here and there. But uh, at the end of the day, I think when I when I have my son, uh, the first few months was uh, really uh, a struggle, struggling moment for me and my wife. Uh, you know, we try to adapt here and there. I think all parents go through that, and you know, to be able to perform 100% in the field and in training, uh, it's it's a bit difficult where, you know, in terms of your sleep, so you need, really need to take care of it. And I feel like my wife, I give credit to my wife, I mean, she's been, you know, very supportive. Uh, she knows during game day, you know, I need the rest and all. So I feel like uh, well, one of the reasons that I do well is because of my wife. Uh, so, yeah. By the way, it looked like it was a grand event. How do you plan for a first birthday party? Uh, actually, this is not. Uh, uh, I've 
I know something like this is going to happen, but uh, this is totally, I will give it to my wife. You know, I'm not a, a celebration type of, you know, team party type of guy, but uh, my wife really wants to make it uh, a really, a really good one for uh, our son. And for me, I feel like, I think uh, we didn't have, a, you know, like a milestone for my son, like, you know, one month, two months, three months. So I feel like, a year is a good thing to do a grand one for my son so and to invite my family my cousins my friends it's a wonderful occasion uh, and you know to expose my son to all our friends family and cousins i think that's the right time uh. you know he can he can walk and all really so i think it's a it's a priceless moment uh, i can say uh. i'm gonna push him to become a footballer <laughs> Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what he can do in the next few months. Uh, I think my wife uh, would love him to study first. <laughs> so we'll see how he goes. As all good parents should. Um, speaking of celebrations, you have this celebration and not many people know the story. I know what the story is. Every time you, every time you score a goal, you have a little celebration. Can you show what you usually do when you score a goal? <laughs> um, my celebration should be it's this. Okay. So I covered my face. Usually I will do L sign is because of my son's name. Yeah. So you adapted it, right? Because there was another way and a lot of people said it was because of Dibala. You tried to copy Dibala celebration, but it started differently for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean like uh to be honest, uh the celebration was kind of me uh playing cards with my friends, you know, and things started going one way and another and I feel like uh before to be honest, before Dibala, I didn't even know uh, at that point that Dibala haven't even ri uh, rises yet, you know, to the to that level, and uh, everyone uh, still know Dibala as you know the the upcoming one and all. But I feel like um, when they they ask me, first you need to do some celebration when you score a goal. Then I was like, I so don't know. I just you know run and just you know punch in the air and everything. So they asked me to do my poker face, and I you know they start to. Uh, give some signs here and there, you know, in terms of like doing this and doing this, doing e everything. Uh. So when suddenly my friend, one of my friends asked me to cover my face, you know, like just uh, because he's using a mask or something. So uh, he asked to cover your face like this. So when I was like, oh, okay, uh, I just cover my face like that. So it's basically I want to cover half of my face. So when uh, uh, when we I played for Home United, then the first goal I scored for that year, 2017, uh, I feel like, okay, uh, I'll try to do something. Uh. So once I do it, then, you know, in the uh, camera motive, and I try to like adjust a bit and all from here to here and here. So when suddenly I become like this, I just cover my face. Uh. So it's it's called poker face, uh, actually, for my friends to name it. Uh. Then after a while, then Dibala started to, you know, zoom up and everything. So he was like, I think something like this, Dibala one. So, uh, after that, then I feel like, oh, uh, am I like copying him? No, everybody's saying that I'm copying him. So I was like, uh, okay, I think after a while, I feel like, okay, my, my son is there. So I think I just need to change it a little bit. I, I need to do L sign. So for my son, Luf. So that's it. I think all the way I'm, I'm doing it right now. So there you have it. The story behind the celebration exclusive <laughs> on the front row seat. Uh, final question for you. Club duties are over but you still have the national team to look forward yep, to correct. um how has the qualifiers been for you personally to be honest i feel like uh it started well uh the national team i think we really do well in uh in singapore against yemen and against uh sorry palestine, uh, palestine. Yeah. so uh when we went off to a away game uh we feel like we need we needed a result but unfortunately i think against saudi we, we lost and when we come back we still need a result and again we lost. So I feel like there is still hope and there is still chance. Uh, just focus and I think this Yemen away game is our final ga game uh, this year. So I think we want to end off this year with a very good note and everyone is fired up. Uh, even the season is over. Um, I think all the national players is looking up to this game and we just want to do it for our family, for the country and for everyone uh, to see where we are standing in the table uh, after that. Yeah. Oh, fantastic to have the AIA Player of the Year on the front row seat. That's the end of segment one, but coming up, it's Team Talk.
Hogan United's Player of the Year, AIA Player of the Year as well, Faris Ramli in attendance here on the front row seat. And we are in a segment called Team Talk. I asked the questions in the first segment, but during the FAS night, we caught up with some familiar faces, people that you may know, and asked them to ask you a question that they've always wanted to ask, but perhaps never ever got the chance. So. Okay. Now it is their opportunity to ask you the question and uh, let's see what they have in store. And the first one is a very familiar face, so let's have a look. Hi Faris, my question is, if your moto die on the road, who is the first person you're going to call? And I think you should tell them the incident and share your stories with them. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a breakdown uh, on the expressway with a motorbike, is it? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I was like, I'm... I'm sure that I think I'm uh, positive that the oil was still there, the petrol. So I feel like uh, something uh, is wrong. Lah. Then I feel like uh, I think uh, it just left one bar. So I feel like the, from Jalan Besar, I'm going back to uh, my house, Punggol. I think it's going to be okay. But somehow I got a like I need to pick up some stuff here and there. And I didn't realize about the petrol. So yeah, uh, after like two stops and all, uh, when from Jalan Besar straight away to Punggol, I think it's okay, it's enough. The petrol is enough. But when I make two detour, then after that, when I almost reaching my house, then my uh, I think my petrol uh, like finished or something. So suddenly, I was like, hey, this is like, I think 10 a.m. or something, <laughs> 10 or 11 a.m. Then I feel like, who is, who is, Ne uh, near me and who is now on the road or anything so I feel like we just finished training and all so I think the last person that always leave the changing room is always Zul for me then I feel like uh, and he leaves Pungol so okay. yeah. so I, I'm just hoping that you know uh, he he's not uh, on his bike uh, and I just call him uh. but when I call him I think message and call him once and message him once he didn't reply then after a few after a few minutes, really, after a few minutes, like one minute later, like I was like, ah, oh, who I want to call? Straight away, Zufami was like, uh, like pass, pass. Coincidentally. Yeah, coincidentally, he was uh, just passing by and he saw. Then he saw, he stopped in front. Then he come back, he didn't realize it was me. He was just like, uh, saw, saw somebody, then he like, want to help. So he stopped a bit, when he turned, uh, he like, saw me, then he like, laugh. <laughs> Straight he laughed. Then I was like, hey! Then I said, you never check your phone. Uh. Then when he checked his phone, then I was like, then he, he, was, he was like shocked. La. Then I was like, eh, yeah, la, yeah. La. Then I said, where are you from? So I, I, from training. La. So I say, yeah, I know you are going to be the last person. So I feel like uh, he's on the way. I think really uh, that helps me a lot. La. Then I think he, we just go to the petrol station, take the, some, some oil, some petrol, and we just pour in and okay, really. La. Well, what a good Samaritan <laughs> Zufami Arifin is. And uh, can you imagine just driving down the expressway and seeing, like, hey, that looks like Zufami. Hey, that, that looks like Faris, and they're on the side of the road with some problems. All right, that's the first question. Let's have a, uh, a look at the second one. Hi, Faris. I would like to ask you, I hear that many, many people say you re resemble somebody on the team, and this person is not a player. Who is he? Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's an inside uh, joke. Yeah. <laughs> so what does he mean? I mean like uh, our kid man. So apparently he's he looks like me. Okay. Juan Azlan. And I think starting all day when I came in, then uh, they really like thought that uh, one Azlan is coming in. So when the first day I came in, then everyone was like, "Hey, Faris." But I thought it's one Azlan. So from <laughs> that day onwards, like everyone was like try starting to make fun of uh, one Azlan and me. One is uh, a is a legend uh, of Singapore football. He's been around the circuit. He was also the kid man for me when I was yeah, at yeah, 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 Wellington. Correct, so correct. he's been there. I think wherever Salim Moin and Clement Teo goes, <laughs> uh, one uh, Azlan goes as well. All right, yeah. some inside joke there. Um, all right, let's have a look at number three. Okay, so who's the king at home? You or your wife? <laughs> well, the king of the training pitch is asking you that question. Clement Teo, the head coach of Haugang United. <laughs> I mean, uh, Clement uh, is uh, been fantastic. Uh, I know he's his first year uh, this year, but I feel like uh, everyone's starting to get along with him and yeah. all I think. So to answer his, to answer his question is is me. Okay. Are you? Yeah, yeah I, it's just I think we had a conversation before okay. me, my wife, and Clement, and he feels like. Uh, what was Clement involved in this in this conversation? Oh, because I think Zulfami uh, did a 
did uh, an event for you know the team bonding lah okay. at his house. So uh, me, Clement, and my wife was all invited. Everyone, uh, family is invited. So I think uh, outside uh, Zufami's area house there, then we just sit and chat. So when I took a uh, drink, then when I came back, then Clement was like, oh, then I was like, why? Then he said that uh, he knows what my wife's work as. So from there, then he thought like my wife is the king, okay. the queen. Yeah. So I feel like, mm, you sure, you sure? Then after that, from there, he was like, Keep on asking me, lah. Keep on teasing me, like, who's the king at home? You are. Huh? Then I was like, no, actually it's me, lah. <laughs> you better watch out. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Okay, I think we have one more for you. Hey, Faris, I always put you to room with Irfan with the national team. But why and how did it started? Why, why did you two become roommates? And why, why is it about Irfan that makes the two of you such good friends? That's Eric Ong, the team manager of the Singapore national team, who's in charge of the rooming situation for the players. So you always room with Irfan? Um, not quite actually, because I think last time I, I was rooming with somebody else. So uh, Al Kasimi, I think mm. you know. So I I think after Al Kasimi was not uh, being called up, then uh, Irfan was the new guy. Yeah. Uh, and he was a youngster back then and I think to just replace, I think at that point in time, Irfan straight away go into my room. Lah. So Kasimi was not called up and uh, Irfan came with me. So since that day onwards, uh, Irfan has been calling, uh, they have been calling up Irfan and all. So he's been with me all the way and I think from that day, I think uh, all the way we've been buddies, uh, we have uh, uh, group chats and all. I think. Yeah, I think he's becoming my good friend, one of my good friends. Uh, laughter here and there. Yeah, S such a annoying and silly guy. Uh, <laughs> this guy. I know he's a funny Ahmad son, but you know he can be really annoying, can be out of character sometimes. But it's fun. You know, if fun, if fun, funny is really fun to hang out with, and uh, we should, uh, you know, ask him to come down here and talk. He's a bit. He's, he looks like macho, yeah. but actually he's a shy guy, man. Really? Me. Yeah. Man. All right, Efan Fandi, that's uh, an invitation for you to come on the front row seat <laughs> given out by Faris Ramli. All right, so these guys gave you some tough questions, but they also have some nice words to say about you as well. So let's have a look. Uh, Faris, uh, you have uh, did extremely well this year, winning player of the year. From the start, I knew you are going to win that award. Um, it always an honor uh, to be playing alongside you, to have you in the team. But I know that you have a um, great future ahead. So I just wish you all the best. You know, I will cherish all those movements that we have been playing together. So I just wish you all the best again, once again. Good luck for the future. Hi Faris, congratulations on winning Player of the Year. It was a pleasure playing alongside you and I wish you all the best and hope to play alongside you once again. Oh, Faris, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure working with you. Uh, knowing that uh, uh, you have always given your best. Um, the, the only disappointment is you have always liked to make fun of me, which I'm terribly disappointed with you. And of course, as a coach, yeah, like what we say, you need to respect people. You know, Faris, I've known you for many years. I've, I've watched you uh, as a fan, and I'm glad that I'm working with you now as a team manager. You're the kind of player that I will always tell my friends, I tell my family that people pay good money to see you. So I hope to see you hit greater heights, especially after winning this uh, Player of the Year award. You know, I think you can do so much better and I look forward to working a lot alongside you as we hit our targets for Singapore. How does that make you feel? Mm. Really great. Um, I'm just... Speechless, I mean, like with all those words, moments, and I just cherish every little things with them. It makes me feel like you know it's uh, worth, you know, really worth to get this trophy with them. And it's just a, uh, I feel a little bit sad because of uh, we didn't achieve our targets. I mean, like not our targets. I mean, like. Um, I know they have targets, but they already achieve it. So we want to go for uh, the title halfway through. Yeah. Uh, we feel like I think uh, we changed the targets uh, to chase the top, which is DPMM. And I think we are eight points difference at that point in time, and we have two games in hand. 
and uh, we really everyone came together we spoke together in the changing room remember only the players um, and re- everyone wants to win it so after everything after we have done so much in training and all I feel like the last two games was really so close but at the end of the day you know if it's meant to be for the payment it's meant to be yeah. so the player of the year trophy yeah. and this is uh, you also were team of the year it says right winger but you play across the line anyway <laughs> do you have a special place for this at home or for all your accolades that you you get uh yeah i've uh keep it uh in one one side first because i haven't had a, a proper cabinet yet okay but uh, i think for now i think someone gonna play with it uh, <laughs> and I, i hope he won't destroy it yeah uh, so it will be my son lah. Yeah. So it's a new toy for him uh, i'm just hoping that uh, he will uh, take care of it because <laughs> this is so precious to me i mean like, like i said uh, the first time i was 19 years old when i signed my first professional contract so I was so determined and I feel like I was I was really small at the bottom and I feel like uh, is uh, it need it needs uh, something to it need uh, for me to you know do something in the S league and to win something even title or whatever it is so I feel like I need to really work hard and make it up for what I lost in terms of the physical side so that part uh, put it aside and I feel like the mental need to be strong and all so You know, preparing everything, the experience overseas and all national team, uh, it really, you know, came back and I feel like it's one of those moments where now I feel like it's all worth it. And and definitely I won't stop here. And this is just a sign and a motivation for me to really, you know, raise my bar and go even higher, like what Eric says, you know, greater heights and all. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your achievement thank and you, uh, you so just don't go yet we have another segment a game segment and uh, I think it's something that you will feel when you go back home because you were, you said you are the king of the house and I'm <laughs> sure your wife won't be happy so after the break we will have the silent treatment Needless to say, this is my most favorite segment on the front row seat. It is the games segment, and today we will try the whisper challenge or the silent treatment. I think we will call it the silent treatment, and uh, we'll play it with the AIA Player of the Year, Faris Ramli. And so the aim of the game is, I've got my uh, headphones here. I've got some Spotify ready for you, okay. and you got to put it on, blast it to max volume or whatever. Is acceptable to you, and I will have my cards here, and I will try to mouth it to you, and you're supposed to try and guess what I'm saying. Okay. So, each card, one is a location in Singapore, the second one is a Singaporean food, and the third one is a Singaporean slang or Singaporean saying. Okay? okay. So you will go first. Put this on and press play when you're ready. Can you hear what I'm saying? I'll just play it first. Hey, can you hear it? <laughs> how's, how's my record so far on this game? I think pretty good, I think. All right. First one. Hey, location, right? Location. Shangri-La. Jalan besar. All right, got it. Got it. Oh, this is a tough one. Um, okay. Food. Food, food. Tose. Wow, first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Saying. Okay. Eh, the oh, still like slang slang. Alama. Hey, this is too easy, <laughs> man. All right, you got it all. <laughs> hey, okay. trust me, <laughs> I've seen yours. Huh? Mine, mine is it's yeah, harder or easier? Easier lah, sir. Man, I tell okay. you. But I will make it hard for you lah. I made it so okay, easy okay. for you. <laughs> all right. Okay, we'll play on the song here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm ready. 
Sure? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Duncan? Okay. Okay, first one is... Location. Location, yes. <laughs> Ang Mukyo. Toa Payo. Ah, easy, right? <laughs> Yeah, food, no, all right. Uh, food, food. <laughs> Cheese fries. Chicken rice. What's he saying? Chinese. Chicken. Chicken rice. Yeah. <laughs> you do that. Thing, yeah, okay. of course. Uh. Okay, same. Okay, last, last one. Slang. Am I, <laughs> can I say that? Is it what I, what I think it is? I don't know. Bocho. The way you're saying it sounds like something that I can't say oh, on no, no, not, not the Not the, the one, no, no. It's like. Bocho. Bocho. Ah. <laughs> Cute. You know yeah. why I was thinking for the last one? I think I know what you're thinking. Very, thinking. very thin <laughs> nice right there. Um, okay, Faris, it was great playing uh, the game with you. Um, we asked every guest on our show as a final parting word to give words of advice to anyone, any athlete that would want to become a, a professional athlete in the future. What would be your word of advice, words of advice to them? Generally or yeah, just in general? general. Um, I think for me, uh, just keep working hard i think that's the most important thing uh, you know you know your body uh, when you have injuries and all i think uh, you know when to st uh, when to stop uh, don't push yourself too hard if you have an injury but other than that i think if you really feel good i think you need to push to uh, to, your, to the max and give everything you've got even in friendly games or even in tournaments um, uh, don't think that uh, bad vibes from surrounding you will stop you. I think make that uh, as a motivation to you. So I feel like that is just something that like I will just take it to myself and challenge it like I said before. Just go and go out there and prove all the haters and those uh, the bad vibes around you. Just kill it and prove them wrong. That That's about it. Uh. Just uh, do it for yourself and at the end of the day you will be surprised of what you are capable of and uh, your body capable of doing. Yeah. Well, so proud of you and congratulations on your success this year, man. Thank you so much thank for coming you so on much. the show. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you for watching The Front Row Seat.